an, an industrial civilization that destroyed our water systems and our water cultures um, had to create its own symbols of what's important. You know, instead of Ganga, the river goddess, it was the coal fire power, power, fired power plant. <laughs> uh, instead of uh, recycling, it's the petrochemical plastic culture. Instead of these amazing seeds that we save on this farm, is genetically modified crops. So there is other symbolisms being put in place that try and suggest to humanity, you know, this is what you have to protect, this is what you have to elevate, this is what you have to organize your life around. This has trivialized precisely those knowledge systems that we need today. And if we were to look at water, I think there are two areas of indigenous knowledge that are vital for survival anywhere. One is biodiversity the knowledge of biodiversity, the protection of biodiversity, the knowledge of crops that use less water, whether it be the millets, delicious, tasty, or it be in the rices, rices that use less water. We have drought resistant rices on this farm which we don't irrigate. 70% of the rices we have conserved don't need irrigation. So we've been made to believe that rice means chemicals, means flood irrigation. And Otherwise, you don't, can't have rice, but you can have rice. The dealing with, of the soil in such a way that the soil becomes a water reservoir. I think that is the only way to deal with climate change, both for mitigation and for adaptation. For mitigation, because 40% of the greenhouse gases are coming from an industrial globalized agriculture. That's the subject of my book, Soil Not Oil. Um, Part of it is chemical fertilizers that are coming out of the soils as nitrogen fertilizers or methane in these horrendous animal prisons that are called factory farms or even more anonymously concentrated farming operations. Um, so you go further and further from the reality that you're really t talking about. And then of course the huge amounts of carbon di dioxide from fossil fuel use. We've deliberately kept this farm tractor free. We use bullocks because the bullocks give the fer fertilizers and we don't have to buy the diesel. Um, but the same soils that uh, get rid of the emissions are also higher absorbers of chemical, of carbon dioxide. There's no system as efficient in recycling carbon dioxide as the soil and the plants. Now, when you look at the discussion in climate change, what are they talking about? They're talking about slightly higher fuel efficiency of vehicles. Add a million more cars and make each 5% more efficient. Is that going to reduce emissions? No, it won't. None of the mechanisms that they thought would reduce emissions have reduced emissions. We've actually had a 16% increase since the Kyoto Protocol was signed. But with organic farming, we literally can reduce emissions and make the soil more fertile and produce more food at the same time while conserving more water. It's in the soil that the water enters agriculture. And the traditional systems of soil building are still the best ways. What is called modern orga organic agriculture came from India through Albert Howard to the rest of the world. So Albert Howard was sent to do chemical farming in India. He said, these guys know how to do their work. We have to learn from them. Wrote a book called The Agricultural Testament. Today, whether it be the Soil Association, which was inspired by Albert Howard, or it be the institution in um, in the United States uh, that does organic farming. Every one of them, like Navdanya, is finding out, oh my God, organic is not just good for producing food, it's the only way to deal with climate change and the secret is the carbon absorption and the water absorption. In water itself, I think we've had so many traditional technologies that allowed water to be conserved. I don't think there's any desert in the world with as dense a life as Rajasthan. But that's because Rajasthan based itself on the harvesting of every drop of water. We've translated a beautiful book by one of our, um, our leading ecologists. He wrote it in Hindi. And in Hindi it's called uh, Rajasthan ki Rajat Bhume, uh, Bune. We've called it the radiant rain drops of Rajasthan. How every drop of water is conserved in Rajasthan to make life livable. Of course, you now have these modern trends of big canals which have created havoc. Um, 
Too much water use is in fact making the Jaisalmer fort come down. The Jodhpur areas is, is being waterlogged with too much uh, water seeping from the canal systems. But the local harvesting systems, I think, are something that needs to be spread through the Ganges Basin, but they need to be spread worldwide. And those delicate systems of conserving water in ways that two years, three years down the line, you still get the purest water from your well into which your rooftop harvesting have gone. We need to learn from indigenous knowledge for all of that.